Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this afternoon's <coughs> webinar, uh, looking at how you might achieve commercial benefit from passenger counting. Um, it is being recorded and will be available uh, on the RTIG YouTube channel uh, over the next couple of days. Um, please do feel free to ask questions as we go along. There'll be an opportunity uh, at the end as well. Um, if you use the chat as we uh, as we go along, so we don't uh, disturb the flow of the speakers, that would be great. Um, and um, yeah, welcome. So um, this afternoon we're going to um, do a few introductions. Going to talk briefly about. Um, some of the previous webinars we've had about passenger counting um, and look at uh, the challenge of uh, TFL in particular um, with uh, with manual counting and, uh, and lack of information um, and um, some uh, research from Transport Focus. Um, we're joined this afternoon um, by uh, Init, Dilax and EPM who are going to talk to us about uh, their capabilities and what they can do uh, with passenger counting information. So, um, previously, um, right at the start of the pandemic, we uh, had two webinars. The first looking at uh, the basics of counting technology. Given that there's very few bus uh, operators out there with any form of automated counting in the UK at the moment. Uh, we started off with the basics about cameras and sensors and things like that. Then we followed that up with one looking at uh, how different people around the world were presenting information uh, about passenger loading and capacity to customers. Um, and then more recently, earlier this year, we uh, invited a few people that had been doing things in the UK, so it actually got some real world experience. People uh, like First Group, their supplier came and talked to us about what they're doing for their customers and how they're presenting information. West Yorkshire talked to us about how they're presenting it on physical displays on street. Um, and those webinars are all available on the uh, Arctic YouTube uh, website. Um, and the slides are available uh, if you're a member uh, on the uh, Arctic members pages. So um, why um, do we now need to look at um, what are some of the commercial um, aspects of it? Well, so far we've looked at it mainly from a customer point of view, um, the customer perspective um, is really important but if you're running a bus company you really need to know what's going on particularly now as we start to come out of uh, lockdowns and restrictions are eased and things like that um, it's from a customer point of view a recovery expectation um, but it's also an opportunity for you to make sure that you're using your fleet and your drivers effectively and efficiently. Um, Transport Focus recently published some work um, about travel during COVID-19 um, and what customers are expecting uh, as life begins to get back to more normal levels of, uh, of commuting and, and travel. Um, and um, the number one immediate priority that they identified was social distancing. Um, customers are concerned about capacity of vehicles and whether they're going to be full or not. So they're expecting uh, operators to uh, manage that capacity to make sure that they're not waiting around too long if buses are full, but also providing improved information. Um, they also um, identified that 
um, for some of the people that haven't travelled on public transport for a long time now, um, having up-to-date information about how much space is on board, the bus that they're going to get, as well as more generally, is going to be vital to, uh, to encouraging them back. Um, and it's an absolute expectation for those that haven't typically been using public transport before the pandemic. So um, you're not going to get the passengers that you might expect if you've not uh, providing customers information, but you're also going to need to be looking at how you handle the rapid change in passenger numbers, the frequency and, and route decisions and things like that. Um, so um, we need to be looking at what we do with um, count data more than just providing it to uh, customers. Um, one of the speakers that we were hoping was going to be able to join us, um, Transport for London, are unable to unfortunately because um, it's been um, deemed uh, a problem under the PERDA rules because of the London mayoral election that's uh, that's imminent. Um, but lucky enough to have, uh, have got a few slides from them about the problem and the challenge that, that they faced um, over the last year. Um, so um, right at the start of the pandemic, uh, as we all know, um, the numbers of passengers dropped significantly um, almost to uh, to zero compared to uh, previous levels um, uh, in the in the week or two after lockdown started um, and um, they um, reduced the services and the frequency that they were operating very very significantly very rapidly uh, as uh, as lockdowns um, uh, got enforced uh, towards the end of March last year. Um, and for them getting hold of this information, um, particularly for buses, has been a significant problem um, because uh, they, for a period, were not charging fares, so people were getting on and off. Um, without having any form of interaction uh, with a ticket machine or anything like that. And so they were relying very extensively on manual counts, uh, particularly for uh, buses. Um, and so um, they introduced a whole series of um, dashboards and reports for the planners um, and management providing um, daily snapshots of what was happening, where there were capacity problems, where they were overloading, um, and where they could um, reduce the, uh, the service levels. Um, and they were looking at um, the data from all sorts of different perspectives. So um, there was more... Um, traveling going around in the, in the outer districts than there was right in the middle um, in the inner zone of, of London, for example, as people um, had to go shopping and things like that, but weren't commuting into uh, the, the center for work. Um, and um, that's reflected in just the sheer volume of changes that they were making to bus services. Um, and so um, some weeks they were making 300 um, changes to, to bus routes, um, which is just a remarkable volume of, of change. Um, in 2019, they, they made 11 um, batches of route changes. Um, last year they made 19, but there were over 3,000 individual routes changes and timing changes as part of those 19 releases. More change than they've ever made in, the, in a year in the life of, uh, of TFL. Um, so very significant. And all of this um, based largely on uh, manual passenger counts. 
So based on only a small proportion of the data that might well have been available to them if they had passenger counts technology. Um, and uh, those of you that keep an eye on tenders, um, you'll have seen the, uh, the IBUS 2 uh, tender release, uh, which is laying the groundwork for um, introducing passenger count uh, technology. Um, and if you go back to our first um, webinar last year, looking at different technologies, um, we did have somebody from Transport for London on talking about some trials that they'd been doing over recent years of different technologies. So um, maybe worth going back and, and looking at that. Um, so that's a bit of background. Um, that's a, a look at the scale of change that TfL have been having to cope with. Any bus operator has been going through that same um, process, um, maybe not at quite the same scale, but the same challenges of actually working out um, not just how many people are going, but what's the demand going to be tomorrow and next week um, and, and trying to uh, work that out and understand that. Um, and which is why um, we thought it important to look at, well, actually, how can you use passenger count data from um, APCs and things like that um, to, to do more than just tell the passenger how many people are uh, on board a bus. Um, so I'd like to uh, hand over now to um, Paul Gwynn from Init. Um, who's um, whilst uh, originally Welsh, she's over in uh, Germany at the moment. Um, so, uh, so welcome, Paul, um, from uh, from the continent. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. I recognise many names on this from a few years ago when I was based in the UK. But nice to see you all. Um, so, APC, uh, automatic passenger counting. Well. Quickly, Init. Um, if you're not familiar with Init, uh, we've been delivering public transport systems all around the world for about the last 37 years. Um, we, I suppose, are known for our fleet management systems and our ticketing systems, uh, but we've delivered over 300 uh, different passenger counting systems. And I say different passenger counting systems because I think there is a diverse uh, widely diverse uh, use of APC technologies. Uh, and we see basically that APCs used really um, from a kind of statistical point of view, um, as, as Tim was uh, talking about uh, a moment ago with TFL, um, it, it's often used by dispatchers um, where there, there are events and overcrowding and, and, and lack of supply uh, and overcrowding on trains and buses. Um, the other thing um, that we see um, in, in lots of places um, is it's used as a method of calculating uh, revenue distribution uh, between different operators, uh, where statistical information is derived from a number of operators um, compared with ticket revenue and, and it's used for, for uh, revenue splitting. Um, in the US, it's used quite a lot for um, government subsidies and uh, public transport authorities in the US have to provide um, validated statistical information back to the uh, Department of Transport um, to, to be allowed to have their concession fares and things like that. Uh, increasingly, we see modern use, particularly in railways, of um, giving information to passengers, guiding passengers through a network, uh, helping them to avoid congestion, things like that. And the, the other thing uh, pre also mentioned by Tim, um, the passenger counting is often used in fraud detection, um, comparing uh, ticket uh, validation data with, with real counts. Um, uh, just a, a bit of an overview of how this is done. Uh, in general, um, counts are done on, on the vehicles. Uh, sensors are, are generally in the doors, um, sometimes in the corridors of, of undergrounds. Um, and they count uh, very accurately uh, by a whole host of uh, suppliers, um, the, the number of uh, people traveling 
uh, in and out of a, a vehicle or up and down a corridor. Um, this information is transferred um, to a central system. And then generally in two, two senses, um, the data is either used in real time to provide uh, information to passengers and dispatchers, or it's used to statistically um, to, to learn things about how a network is running, uh, change over time um, uh, in, in terms of performance management and KPI um, uh, information that's given to people. Um, but also statistically, uh, increasingly um, data is used in planning systems um, and, and that's the first sort of case study I, I just really want to touch on very briefly. Um, so it's possible to take uh, information back from a ticketing system, from passenger counts um, and real time and compare what was planned um, with, with what is actually happening. Um, and here we, we're looking at a, a couple of bus routes. So in, in black, what was planned in red, it was what's actually happening. And you're able to drill down to individual stops and you're able then to, um, with statistical tools in the planning, um, take the impact of, of passenger and passenger behavior and changes of passenger behavior over time. So if there's an event, um, for example, you can see the difference between school days and non-school days. If there's a special event or something changes in your system, it may have impacts on your on your dwell times, etc. Um, if you can use this information intelligently, which is kind of what London was trying to do during COVID, um, it gives you new information about new demand patterns and things like that. And you can often op optimize your services um, based on the new insight you have, the new uh, information that you have on, on, on passenger patterns, real passenger pa patterns taken historically um, and um, balancing your, your planning uh, based on passenger data is, I, I guess, quite a new field of work that's being done and something that, that we're doing quite a lot of. Um, I suppose the, the other thing that we've been looking at is, is stuff that the Department of Transport's been doing around um, real-time passenger information, sharing real-time passenger inf information uh, through things like BODs and, and the work that the Department of Transport is now looking at, uh, looking at, at quality of information and blending in things like APC um, into the statistics that they want to share. And that's something that, that's ongoing and we, we, we're doing a couple of um, uh, trials and things in, 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 in the Midlands uh, looking at this. Um, and the, it provides new insights, uh, both for operators um, and, and the government, um, uh, about what's actually happening in their networks and, and some of the reasons why. Um, and I think there's a lot of quality of information that comes out of that. I suppose the, the other thing that's changing is that, that people provided static timetable information, stuff like like this that was just, you know, prediction of when something was going to run. Um, the other thing that people have then started to do is overlay that um, with, with re real-time passenger information. And that's great if you're waiting for, waiting for a bus um, and you know how many people are on it, but it's not quite the complete story. We have to do some, some prognosis based on history. So we have to new, you know, learn patterns of behavior. So if you're waiting at a stop and the bus is full, but the stop that you're at is at the railway station. Um, it's useful to know that 50% of the people get out of whatever vehicle you're waiting for at the railway station. And so this idea now of looking forward based on, on statistical information about patterns of behavior um, starts to, to apply. And I think that's a, a, a new branch of work that certainly we and other people are working on, uh, and that will derive great things. So I think in general, um, uh, you know, it, it has an impact on planning, it has an impact on understanding demand. The other thing that people are looking at are, are dynamic pricing. You know, if, if the network's lightly loaded or a route is lightly no loaded, why are we charging peak fares? Could we charge a lower fare? Could we induce people to change their patterns of behavior? Um, subsidies and comfort and quality and safety, uh, we, we've, we've talked about. But I think the other thing that we see emerging in the UK in particular, is mass and and being able to offer people a, a quality choice 
uh, based on a lightly loaded uh, routing algorithm. So you might want to pay a bit more, you might be able to afford to take a bit more time, but you want a lightly loaded um, travel plan. And certainly that sort of stuff, stuff is coming along. Um, the other thing that's emerging is guiding. Um, and particularly in railways, um, we see things like this happening, that based on passenger information um, in railways and, and in, in travel hubs, giving passengers information about which way to route themselves based on the loading that's currently in the system is quite a, a, a you know, uh, it, it sounded fanciful a couple of years ago, but it's now actually reality and happening and people are trialing, trialing this. Um, and then encouraging um, people to behave in different ways um, to, to use the available space in the networks on a predictive basis is, is I think, where we're kind of getting to at the moment. And, and that will pay a lot of benefits in terms of economy, comfort, satisfaction. Um, that's a brief rush, rush through. Uh, a very complicated set of topics, uh, but that's some of the things that we see happening uh, in um, APC uh, these days and the uh, things that we're working on, uh, along with a whole bunch of other people. And I expect uh, uh, Elena is about to tell us about some other examples uh, that she sees. Yeah, thank you, Paul. That was uh, that was a very uh, good uh, presentation looking at, uh, at, at what you're saying uh, it's particularly interesting the breadth of experience you've got in different places around the world um and and trying to understand how they might be applied in in the uk um so uh, has anybody got any questions for paul um because uh, unfortunately he's not going to be able to stay with us until the end uh, if you've got any then uh, please put them into the chat um, and uh, we'll now um, hand over um, down the road in Germany to uh, Elena <laughs> Kuhnfarvel um, from um, Dilax to talk to us about uh, their solutions. Yes, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, actually, we are, we are moving up north now from Karlsruhe up to Berlin. <laughs> so we are making the way. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I am yeah, very honored to speak to you today. Um, my name is Elena Kühnapfel, and I am sales manager for the Nordics and UK at Deluxe Intelcom. And yeah, um, today I would like to ask you if this photo <laughs> looks familiar to you. Traffic jams, delays, or in short, stress. So lately, and well, even worse, um, the drop in passenger numbers, especially now during the pandemic, has not really helped to reduce cars and traffic jams in cities. So what can you as operators of PTAs actually do about this? Mm. And for us, and I think we agree on this, public transport is indeed a core element for creating livable, sustainable cities and offering mobility for everybody. And yet, it's also clear that someone has to pay for this and has to care for the services offered. So, of course, it's reasonable that we talk about this today and consider the commercial benefits uh, for you as responsible persons. And that's why I would like to talk a little bit about driving mobility choices through APC data. And what we really see is a hunger for information these days, and especially during last year. First, there is an increased need for information around safety on board and a perceived higher risk of infection, especially during peak times. Second, COVID, well, it represents one component, but the underlying questions for passengers are much more general. And in my daily discussions, especially with customers from the Nordics market, I hear from Sweden, Iceland, Norway, and Finland alike that operators receive a lot more requests to provide passengers with data. And this data allows passengers then to make their own decisions and plan their journeys accordingly. In other words, questions that passengers were already asking before the pandemic 
are now of even greater importance. And the difference is not only the traffic, the traffic planning side, but also passengers are now increasingly hungry for information. So besides questions like, is the next bus on time? There are now new questions which came up around how crowded is the bus I want to take? Should I rather take the next one, which is emptier? And well, also, do I have space for my baby buggy or anything else that needs space, right? Um, another aspect is, of course, for wheelchairs. Is there also space for them? Is the space already occupied? So all of this can be answered with valid data and not with vague guesses. And ideally in real time. <laughs> so um, passengers and public transport providers and maybe also bus drivers will need this information. And yeah, with automatic passenger counting sensors or APC, um, we claim that you are no longer dependent on selective or even occasional manual counting or just the number of tickets sold as indicators. Well, still manual countings and ticket sales are indicators and maybe Paul would even tell you more about this. And still uh, for us, it is really about the accuracy and the insights you get from accurate data about actual vehicle occupancy and yeah, even more important, the travel behavior within your network. So we ask, can a sensor now make public transport better? Well, you can decide and answer this for yourself, but for us with an APC system installed in your vehicles, doesn't necessarily have to be for the whole fleet. If you have questions around that, I'm happy to answer them. But for APC systems in your vehicles, you can be sure you generate your own local data. And that is reliable, anonymous, and long lasting in terms of the technology. So with this being said, some, some words about DLAPS. We offer several sensor technologies specifically certified for public transport. And you will see that most APC sensors by now are capable to count correctly with a very high counting accuracy up to 99%. And yet what our customers in over 1,800 cities worldwide appreciate about DLAX is that we at its very core, we are an engineering company based in Berlin. We have a local production team, development team, and extensive experience in the market for over 30 years. And our USP is offering turnkey solutions tailored to individual operator needs and technical requirements. And in addition, maybe important for you, we also have a local UK subsidiary. So, um, in this webinar and maybe even from previous ones, I'm sure you already came across different suppliers from APC uh, technologies and still it's probably very important for you to decide how can you know who's the best fit and what's the most reasonable investment for you and the fleet. But also, obviously, there is another very challenging question around how can you get passengers back on board public transport and generate more revenue while keeping enough space these days. Tricky. So the solutions um, are with data-driven mobility planning. First, you can decide in favor for a specific counting technology, be it infrared or camera-based, for example. And for this, you can then decide if you want to install it um, um, right from the manufacturer or even later on during maintenance work as retrofits. Either way, it works. Second, and ideally, this generated passenger counting data from the vehicles is transmitted in real time to a backend system and then in combination with other relevant data, such as timetable information, you can really make sense of the data. So not only passenger countings, but also punctuality, uh, fleet performance and so on can all be answered with such a data enrichment process. Um, yet 
the hardware and therefore the generation of passenger counting data is only half of the story. So what is even more important is for traffic planners and managers, it's the data analysis and the decisions at the end of the day. And this means easy to understand reports that support making concrete business decisions and consequently improve the services you offer. Elax can help you with all of these aspects that I mentioned on the slide. And in short, um, and to give you a very brief insight, we can also help you with the reports in our backend system called Citizens. And there the data is processed and validated, for instance, with the timetable information. And with this, you know exactly if the vehicle is driving where it should be and also when it should be. <laughs> And we believe that this local data that you generate yourself is really invaluable. Local data gives you the power to decide on facts. And in addition, you own the data. So this means you get accurate passenger statistics. And the emphasis is on accurate. You can plan your fleet and staff along with the demand for the services. You can also include manual counting and other data sources like weather forecasts, special events like football games for better planning. And last but not least, um, you can match the passenger countings with your timetable to see if uh, the punctuality and location is all working. And as we know, today the topic is on commercial benefits with APC data. And for this, I would like to emphasize that in addition to react on ad hoc uh, challenges like traffic volume, APC data will also bring you um, the possibility to plan on a long-term basis. For instance, APC data gives traffic planners the decision basis to reduce or even extend the offered services and vehicles in use. So the question would be, where should you have more or even less vehicles in use to save costs? In addition, the same is true for efficient and demand-oriented staff planning. You can save costs when you really know how much stuff is needed and when. And finally, I'm afraid to tell you there is no single strategy to generate more revenue and get passengers back on public transport, but what APC data can certainly help you with is the evaluation of your network activity to then decide, is the service offered still meeting passenger demands? So this will also include passenger needs um, with special requirements as you see in the picture, like wheelchairs or bicycles, for instance. And all of this can be addressed when you work with APC, so you know how to react and plan your service. And just to give you one, I think, very successful example of the application of APC for mobility planning, um, one of our customers in Sweden, Skåne Trafiken, um, has very successfully visualized real-time occupancy in a live map uh, just in spring last year, so very early in the pandemic. This was also mentioned in one of the sessions uh, here with Tim. And they used a color code to indicate is the vehicle occupied, half occupied or free. And fun fact, this information, this website has been the most clicked page ever since. So definitely a success. Finally, and to finish my presentation, um, in less than an hour, um, I'm very thrilled that Deluxe will launch an innovation for passenger counting a technology that recognizes what really matters in our perspective. And this launch um, will address new factors for precise, for the very precise collection of passenger numbers. And it actually combines this passenger number uh, information with additional information to help people with disabilities find the right, uh, yeah, plan the right, uh, plan their journeys the right way. So um, what this means, um, what happened? Sorry for this technology. 
here we are. I would like to invite you, if you have the time, to uh, join us on the product launch today. I would also like to um, post the link to the registration in the chat. So if you find the time, you can also watch it on demand. And yeah, with this, I would yeah, really yeah. like to say thank you and uh, give the word back to you, Tim. Yeah, thank you, uh, Elena. Has anybody got any questions? Uh, I thought it was very interesting that you picked up on the one of the same things that uh, that Paul was talking about, um, that it's not just APC data that you need to be using. It, it, you need to put it together with with other data to get the complete picture. Um, to, and, and so that, that makes sense. Um, but I also thought it was quite interesting. You were saying that uh, you don't need to equip all of the fleet um, and you could do a, a, a partial um, fit. Because that's one of the things that, that people mm -hmm. I think are quite worried about about the cost yeah. of, of of fitting a whole fleet to to get the information that they're after. Exactly, and the uh, magic word here is projection. So if you have questions on that, um, please feel free to reach out. So there is no need to equip the whole fleet with such a uh, system, and yet that's desirable. But you have to start somewhere, and um, with projection methods, Paul will probably uh, confirm this. There are very good ways to know what's going on in your network with a selected amount of uh, vehicles equipped with APC technology. So that's the good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Um, so um, given there are no questions from anybody else, um, I'd like to move to uh, the UK for our next presenter. Um, with Nick Brooks from uh, EPM, um, who's going to talk to us about um, their uh, analytics uh, tools and um, their capabilities. Welcome, Nick. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is, is Nick Brooks. I'm the software director at EPM. Um, and this afternoon, I'm going to provide a, a brief introduction to EPM Bus Solutions. Um, and then provide an overview of our new insights project, um, which is about leveraging uh, data for operators and local authorities. Right, okay, so um, EPM have been providing software solutions to um, to operators and local authorities in the UK for, for more than 30 years. Um, but we've, we've recently made some changes. So a new name, uh, EPM Bus Solutions, uh, new focus, um, and new solutions as well, um, as we seek to help operators um, and local transport authorities um, address the new and emerging challenges that we're all more than aware of. Um, what we haven't changed uh, is the quality of our software and service, and that we remain a trusted partner with, with deep domain expertise in bus, uh, particularly in the UK. Um, and our focus remains uh, around the, the commercial and operational areas of bus operations and uh, providing solutions to support in maximizing revenue, improving efficiency and growing patronage. So the first of our new solutions um, is called Insights. Um, and the reason that we've developed this new product uh, is that we've recognized that our solutions underpin a number of critical business processes um, and as a result, hold a vast amount of data. Um, however, it can be difficult for, for operators and local transport authorities to, to extract information as well. Um, so this is a problem that we've discussed with a variety of clients to get their feedback. Um, and it became clear um, that clients wanted to understand their data. Um, and I think the previous presenters have touched on this a couple of times today as well. Um, so what, what does Insights do? Um, well, Insights automates the consolidation of data um, from both the EPM database, but also third party solutions as well um, to provide management information. Um, so you can see on the left hand side, lots of different examples of, of data um, 
that, that are used that, that are common across a bus operation. Um, so we've got things like ETM data, which obviously will, will hold patronage information, accidents, customer services, AVL, um, but that could be any third party system um, in the operator or local authority ecosystem. Um, and again, as, as previous presenters have touched on, um, operators having access to a range of data um, and being able to consolidate that in one place um, makes a lot of sense. Um, so what this does um, is it provides management information across the business. So our, our focus um, is around commercial and operational areas um, and engineering as well. And we'll put consolidating all of that data into one place. And it, it also allows you to decide the, the key metrics as senior management as well for the business. So these are then presented as a series of dashboards. Um, an executive dashboard is one example, um, but there can be a range of dashboards that are configured for different purposes or business functions, um, such as operations or commercial. And then for each metric, um, you can then drill down um, to understand factors causing the reported performance. Um, so that could be, for example, profitability or reliability. Um, and for our local transport authority customers, uh, insights can also be configured for their requirements, so making it easy to see key metrics um, such as patronage, uh, cost per passenger on contracts, cost per mile, um, and lost trips and mileage as well. Um, and then ultimately drill down in, into the results. So I'm just going to share um, a couple of examples with you. So um, this, this is an example from the executive perspective. Um, so this is a top level view of the organization. So the areas of the business that management teams need to keep under constant review. Um, and one of these areas will, will be patronage. Um, it's clearly a key driver for operators and local transport authorities um, as they seek to reshape networks around customer demand um, as everyone hopefully emerges soon from the pandemic. So then if we if we then drill down again, um, so this is just another example where we're drilling down in, into the data. So looking here at, at, at patronage and occupancy dashboards, um, and here what we're, we're trying to do is to provide information that enables questions to be answered, um, such as you know, what are the trends of patronage compared to um, last year, last month, last week? Um, how do different routes compare? Um, and, and ultimately trying to identify where the demand is as well. Okay. So then it, it's possible to keep drilling down into this data. So then as we drill down again, um, we can then start to focus on, on other areas. So what, what are the trends between days? Um, obviously important. What, are the services at times of the day which are, are not carrying passengers. Um, and then management time can be um, focused on developing action plans to address these issues um, and ultimately focus on, on working to try and optimise their networks. So in terms of, of business benefits that, uh, that Insights delivers, um, the initial benefit is the identification of anomalies and omissions in information. Um, so the, these need to be corrected, otherwise decisions are made on the wrong basis. Um, and then on an ongoing basis, it enables an understanding of the root causes of business performance, uh, both financial and operational, and the development of action plans to address them to, to improve performance. And then an added benefit is the information is automated and seamless. So again, pulling together data from a, a range of different sources into one place, um, removing tasks around data manipulation and low value tasks from, from analysts so that they can basically spend the time where they should be, which is analyzing the data. So in summary, um, our new Insights product uh, is 
create an actionable intelligence to make data-driven decisions to improve performance, uh, utilizes information from the EPM database, but third-party vendors as well, which is delivered seamlessly uh, and has the ability to drill into issues, and it enables action plans to be developed to improve performance, both financial and operational. So, hope that you found my contribution to this afternoon's webinar useful. Um, should you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. And um, thanks again, Tim, for the invitation. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Um, so, um, I think one of the interesting things to uh, to to pick up from from that is um, if if you're an authority and you've got multiple operators in your area that uh, that that are that are using EP um, for uh, for commercial management, then you can bring all of that together. So you don't have to have every operator with the same APC system or or ticket machine and things like that. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that's absolutely right. So that's one of the the, the key benefits. So um, for operators in the past, um, going back some time now, it, it was quite common for them to have um, a, a range of different ticket machines, for example. Um, and we would be able to consolidate that into one uh, EPM format, enabling consistent reporting. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that we've taken forward and just looking to pull all of the data together in one place, in one format, um, so people can can focus on on, on getting the benefit from, from the, the vast range of data that the operators and authorities have got access to. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Has anybody got any questions for... Uh... For Nick or uh, Elena, or do you want to uh, ask any other questions about the work that we're doing in Artig, or uh, you'd really love to see a, a webinar on a particular topic? Um, I haven't got any future uh, adverts yet um, for uh, for future topics because we're uh, we're working uh, up the plan for um, the coming months at the moment, so uh, there will be more over the coming uh, weeks and months but um uh, we're still working on the uh, on the exact topics at the moment so we're very much open to uh, to suggestions from people uh, so we've got a question um if any part of the fleet have apc how can it predict rtpi for the passenger at the stop so that's perhaps one for uh, elena yes i already unmuted myself so uh, there is a long and a short answer to this, and I'm uh, happy to give the long answer uh, afterwards. So I think this is not good for, for the time that we still have. But um, how this is usually done is, uh, A, of course, very complex algorithms in the back who do the magic uh, and um, yeah, complete the data in very easy terms. And second, um, there are some minimal requirements which help you to get the projected data in, in another way. For instance, you have several lines, let's say five lines where uh, your buses are running. And on every line, there is at least one vehicle that covers the lines. And with this information, you can project the information for the additional ones. If one line is completely missing, then of course, even the best algorithm cannot uh, make up data on lines which do not give you any databases, if that answers your question in short. Thank you for that. Uh, are there any more? Uh, if not, then uh, I'd like to, uh, to thank Paul, Elena and Nick for their presentations this afternoon. Um, the slides will be um, circulated in the next couple of days uh, along with the recording, so you'll have their contact details if you want to uh, follow up with them uh, on anything. Um, and um, if you want to uh, get in contact with, uh, with me about any of the work that Artig's doing, then uh, my contact details are on the screen. Thank you for um joining us this afternoon hope you found it useful 
uh, and look forward to uh, seeing you again uh, on a call uh, very soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank you.